How to use pulse oximetry for children and newborns. Pulse oximetry is a simple and reliable way to determine the amount of oxygen in a person's blood. But it is only effective if the user knows how it works and what to do if oxygen levels are low. This video includes three parts. In the first section, we will learn about hypoxemia and why pulse oximetry is important. In the second part, we will learn how to use a pulse oximeter. In the third part, we will learn about how to get a good reading when things are difficult. Hypoxemia and the importance of pulse oximetry. Hypoxemia refers to insufficient oxygen in the blood. Hypoxemia is a life-threatening problem that can complicate pneumonia, neonatal conditions, general and obstetric emergencies. Severe hypoxemia may be recognised by certain signs, like fast breathing, severe chest indrawing, central cyanosis and nasal flaring or grunting with every breath. However, detecting hypoxemia using clinical signs is difficult and studies have shown that even the most experienced clinicians frequently get it wrong. Using pulse oximetry can correctly identify 20 to 30% more children with hypoxemia than using clinical signs alone. Pulse oximetry measures the percentage of oxygenated haemoglobin in arterial blood. Oxygenated haemoglobin is red, while deoxygenated haemoglobin is blue. Inside the oximeter probe is a light, which produces red and infrared light when it's placed on the patient. Opposite the light is a detector. Oxygenated and deoxygenated blood allow different amounts of light through. This means that the oximeter can calculate the blood oxygen level based on the amount of light transmitted. The pulse oximeter will tell you the blood oxygen level, technically called the peripheral capillary oxygen saturation. This is also called the oxygen saturation, SpO2 or SATs for short. The pulse oximeter will also tell you the heart rate and display a pulse indicator or waveform. It is important to check for a regular pulse indicator or waveform to make sure you get an accurate reading. The oximeter will give an audible beep to indicate each heartbeat, and the beep will change tone according to the lower or higher saturations. Normal oxygen saturation in a healthy person is 95 to 100%. If the oxygen saturation is less than 90%, this indicates hypoxemia and is an indication for giving oxygen immediately. If hypoxemia is not corrected, it can cause severe damage to organs such as the brain and sometimes death. For most children, we recommend aiming to keep their oxygen saturations above 90% at all times. In some situations, such as severe anemia and brain injury, oxygen may be started when the saturations are less than 94%. In preterm and very small newborns, it can also be dangerous to give too much oxygen, causing damage to the eyes and lungs. Pulse oximetry is useful to prevent the administration of too much oxygen. We recommend aiming to keep the oxygen saturations between 90 and 95% for preterm and very small newborns who need oxygen. Key points. Hypoxemia is a life-threatening complication of pneumonia and other medical conditions. Normal saturations in a healthy person is between 95 and 100%. For most children, give oxygen to keep saturations above 90%. For preterm and very small newborns who need oxygen, target saturations between 90 and 95%. How to use a pulse oximeter. Kabale is a two-year-old girl who has come to hospital with her father. Dr. Mariam is going to check her oxygen saturation. It's nice to meet you. My name's Dr. Mariam. I'm going to check your oxygen levels today. Is that all right? Let's check on Dad first, okay? Let's put it on Dad. What does Dad say? 99%. Perfect. Now let's try on you. Can I have your finger? Thank you. Oh, we're not getting a very good trace there. Can we try a different finger? Let's try a different finger. That's better. A hundred percent. Thanks, Capelle.
Now we will discuss each of the important steps individually. Check that the oximeter is plugged in and working. Introduce yourself and show the child and patient the pulse oximeter, explaining what you are doing. Oximeters may be handheld, desktop or fingertip. Dr. Marim is using a handheld oximeter from Lifebox. Place the oximeter probe gently on the finger and wait. You can hold the child's arm gently, but do not squeeze the finger. Probes can also be used on the toe or ear. Wait until the oximeter shows a good pulse waveform. This may take some time. You can also palpate the pulse and check that it matches the pulse indicator. If there is a poor trace, try repositioning or changing to a different finger. Record the oxygen saturation on a monitoring chart. If the patient is on oxygen, record the oxygen flow rate and whether it has been changed. Finally, remove the probe and wipe it clean before using it on the next patient. The probe is the most delicate part of the oximeter and needs to be looked after carefully. Key points. Prepare the oximeter and patient. Place the probe gently on the finger. Wait until there is a good pulse waveform. Document the saturations and oxygen flow rate. Remove the probe and wipe it clean. Common problems. Getting an oxygen reading is not always easy. There are four main reasons for not getting a good reading on an oximeter. The probe is poorly fitted. The patient is moving or distressed. The patient is very unwell. The oximeter or probe is faulty. We will now go through each of these separately. It can be difficult to get a good reading if an oximeter probe is poorly fitted. Try a different size probe or move the probe to a different finger or toe. Make sure the hands and feet are warm. If they are cold, the blood flow will be limited, causing the pulse signal to be weak. It can be difficult to get a good reading with a moving or uncooperative child. It is important to take your time to do this properly. Get the parent to help you by comforting or distracting their child while you measure the oxygen level. Explain what you are doing so that the parent and the child are not fearful. Let the child move freely and do not hold the probe tightly as this will stop the blood flow and reduce the pulse signal. Sometimes in very sick children, pulse oximetry will be difficult because of poor circulation. If there are signs of shock or very poor perfusion, this is an emergency. Resuscitate immediately and don't let pulse oximetry delay treatment. Sometimes the problem can be with the oximeter or the probe. Check the oximeter is properly charged. Low charge can cause faulty readings. Check the probe is properly connected. Be careful with the connecting pins. Check the oximeter on your own finger to see if it is functional. We've now learnt how to use pulse oximeters for children and newborns, and how to respond to common challenges. Here are some expert tips to summarise. If the child is very sick, resuscitate urgently. Explain what you are doing and ask the child's parents to help. Be patient and wait for a good pulse waveform. If you think the probe is faulty, check it on yourself. If you can't get a reading, warm the patient's hands or try a different site. Oximeters are a vital tool for identifying low oxygen levels so that treatment can be started quickly and appropriately before complications arise. For more detailed information, the following resources may be useful.